If you have breast implants, I would highly encourage you to print off this list and go over it. Um, I will link in this video the exact list that I'm going to be reading off of today, but I would encourage you to pause the video, go print it out for yourself, and if you have breast implants, go through this list with me to kind of see where you're at. Um, and a little disclaimer before we start, a lot of people don't like these lists just because they feel like a lot of people already have these symptoms and they're blaming it on their breast implants. So what I would suggest is really think about when you're going through this list, did you have any of these symptoms before you got breast implants? And if you did, then I would be leery on that specific one, although it probably has gotten a lot worse if you did have a symptom before you got breast implants and then you still have it now or it's way worse. So I guess I would notate if you had something before and it's on this list, then it's probably worsened from your breast implants. Okay, so if you have went ahead and printed that out, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna go through this list and I'm gonna read it out loud and let you know which ones that I can recognize that I know that I've had. I've had breast implants for 20 years. The first set that I had were the textured gel implants that are linked to causing BIA-ALCO. And um, the second set I got, <laughs> I got those before I realized breast implant illness was a thing. Those are smooth implants, but again, they're still silicone gel, which is neither here nor there. All implants have 40 different toxic chemicals in them. Some have more, some have maybe a little less, but they're all toxic. And unfortunately, they are all known to leak into your body, which has adverse effects. Um, hence why we now have huge lists like these. I mean, if you haven't printed it off, just take a look at this. Like, it's a long list. I am preparing for explants soon, and so I thought, you know what, let's document um, what symptoms I had, and let's just do it on camera because I know a lot of you following me are following me because you might have breast implant illness or are curious if you do, um, or just maybe you're thinking about getting implants and now you're on the fence because you keep hearing about all this stuff. Um, so yes, I'm gonna go ahead and go through this list and document it. And if you don't print it off, if you just wanna kind of take a mental note or write things down, go ahead. But yeah, let's go ahead. Okay, the first one on the list is fatigue. And I'm gonna check that. Brain fog and memory loss, yes. I've been with my partner for 20 years and he will literally tell you, I don't remember anything like um, to, to the point where I think he thinks that I just make it up. But literally that's, I think it's associated just with breast implants because he met me a few months after I got the breast implants and didn't know me before. So he doesn't know me any other way. And I'm hoping after explant, it gets better. I'll just feel like maybe I'm actually like smarter and just more together. Okay, so um, muscle and joint pain. Yes, that is a big one. Hair loss, dry skin, and dry hair. Um, for me, I don't, I don't think I have hair loss um, or dry. Well, you know what? The dry hair, I will say, after the second set of implants. I do feel like my hair has become more dry. And um, a lot of you know, if you follow me because of like my YouTube shorts, I was a hairstylist for 22 years. I use really good hair products. So usually my hair should be in really good condition, but it has been drier since this last set of implants. Um, premature aging. Ugh. I would like to say no on this one, but this one's kind of hard to... I'm gonna go ahead and check yes, but We'll see after I explant if I start looking more youthful, like my skin and my face, um, because I do get a lot of dark circles under here that I never had before. Um, and I do feel like I'm starting to get wrinkles, but then again, I am almost 40, so that's natural too. Weight problems. I'm unsure about this one as well. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and mark it, but I will see after I explant if there's any changes. Inflammation, definitely. Poor sleep and insomnia, yes. 
I have had such a hard time sleeping, especially since this last set. And I want to say um, my first set was over the muscle, which I feel is a lot easier of a route um, to take if you're going to get implants. Ever since I've had them under the muscle, I seem like I have a whole new slew of problems um, and sleeping is definitely one of them. Dry eyes decline in vision, yes. And I'm kind of worried about this one because after I got my breast implants, my vision got really, really bad and I had to have um, LASIK eye surgery done. And then uh, I guess it was like maybe four or five years ago, I had to have that touched up again and I had to get PRK done, um, which kind of makes me nervous because I'm like, was all of this just because my implants and I didn't need that surgery? I don't know, but I do have very severe dry eyes partly probably because of the Lasix, but this probably makes it worse. Hyper or hypothyroid problems. I don't think I have thyroid problems, so I'm not going to mark that. Um, hypo or hyper adrenal symptoms. I'm not sure about that. Parathyroid problems. I'm not sure about that. Hormone imbalance, diminishing hormones. I will say I, I'm not very good about going to the doctor because I went to him for so long. Um, because of all the health problems I was having that I've taken a break, but I do feel like I'm starting to have some, um, hormonal imbalance and I am wondering if it has something to do with this last set of implants. So I'm going to put a question mark by this one. Early menopause. I don't think so. Hysterectomy, knock on wood. No, not yet. Low libido. Um, I don't know. Sometimes, but isn't that all of us? Um, slow healing and easy bruising. This is a big yes for me. Um, throat clearing, cough, difficulty swallowing. Yes. Choking, reflux, metallic taste in the mouth. Sorry, that was all one. Yes. And this is really interesting to me. And I am curious after I explain it, if this will improve. Like, I think it was maybe five years ago, I had to start getting my esophagus stretched like twice a year and it didn't seem to last very long. And I constantly feel like my throat is just tight and closing. Um, and I'm constantly needing to get it stretched and I do have trouble getting food down. Um, and I was seeing a GI doctor obviously for all of these things. Um, and I did end up having reflex and all that. So I'm really curious. I've heard other ladies say after they explanted, this got better. So stay tuned for that one because I'm, I'm really hoping that that gets better. Okay, so we're gonna check those. Vertigo, yeah, I've definitely been having that and I didn't have it with the first set that I recall, but with this second set under the muscle, I do. Gastrointestinal issues such as reflux, acid reflux, GERD, gastritis, yes, all of those. Um, and that got really bad. Mm. I feel like when all my symptoms got super, super bad was around the 13 year mark for me. And I think that's when I started to maybe really start getting weak implants where they were rupturing and they were ruptured. I think that's when my symptoms like exacerbated. Um, so I always tell people, the longer you have your implants in, the more symptoms you're probably gonna get because it's breaking down inside of your body and leaching more into your body. So definitely be getting your implants checked, just one, just to make sure they're not ruptured because that is a whole new, another ball game. Um, yes, okay, so GERD, gastritis, yes, yes. Leaky gut, IBS, and SIBO, yes. Um, I definitely have IBS. The SIBO one, I have someone that I know, um, and I just seen this on the list when I printed it off and I had to text her um, because she's been having really bad problems with this and I know she has implants. So I was like, check out this list. I had no idea that that could be part of the breast implant illness thing. So that's interesting. Okay, pancreatitis, I don't think so. Fever, night sweats night sweats, intolerant to heat and cold. Okay, I will say the intolerant to heat and cold so, so much, especially after my implants ruptured, but um, I, well, I'll, I'll, I'll save the diagnosis for that for a little bit, but yes, I'm either like freezing or too hot. Like I definitely have an intolerance. 
Um, let's see, persistent bacterial, viral, fungal infections. Yeast infections, candida, sinus infections, and UTI infections. I've had problems with this um, a lot, but I will say I'm really good about homeopathic stuff and um, have a lot of good natural remedies for this stuff. So I'm constantly staying on top of it. So if I have the slightest twinge of feeling like I'm going to come down with one of these type of things, I'm on top of it. Um, and if you are wanting to know some of those things, just drop a comment below, like some of the things I do to kind of combat, um, you know, any type of illness or dis-ease. Um, okay, skin rashes. Yes, definitely. Um, I Well, even talking about the stuff, as you can see, I'm breaking out in a rash on my neck right now. Um, I don't recall having that when I was younger at all. And I've been getting really, really bad rashes like on my arms here, like on my boobs. Um, and then w because the rash will itch so bad, I try to be careful, but inevitably I'll end up with sores and they don't want to heal up and they bleed really easy. Um, and it's just like constantly. So that's why like right now I literally, I'll show you just because the video is about this, but I literally have a bandaid here and here because of that exact reason. Um, and I'm having a really hard time getting those to heal. So I put some special stuff on it and I'm trying to heal that up right now. So yes, um, so let's check that. Ear ringing, I have been getting this some. Um, sudden food intolerances and allergies. Yes, there are so many things that I'm like, I used to be able to eat that and now I can't. So I'm curious how that will change after explant. Headaches, migraines, and ocular migraines. Yes, I was even seeing a neurologist for this and I still have issues with it. Um, okay, slow muscle recovery after activity. Yes, heart palpitations, changes in normal heart rate or heart pain. Yes, and I wanna say with this one, and I think I've made a, a short video about it in my BII playlist. I didn't have these type of heart problems with the implants that were over the muscle. I started getting that when I got the implants under the muscle. So if you have them under the muscle and you have a lot of these heart issues, take that into consideration. Um, okay, sore and ache, all right, sore and aching joints of shoulders, hips, backbones, hands, and feet. Yes to all of those. And especially like if you have breast implants and you constantly have net, uh, knots in your neck and in your shoulder blades and you'll go get massages and they have a hard time getting them out and they might loosen up some, but then they come back, then take this into consideration. Um, okay. Swollen and tender lymph nodes in the breast. Yes, most of us do have that. So definitely keep an eye on that. Um, and under the arm, throat, neck, groin as well for the swollen lymph nodes, um, which is really concerning because now that it's coming out that, you know, breast implants can cause cancer, you aren't sure if you're just having a autoimmune reaction or if you need to be investigated more thoroughly. Okay. Um, dehydration for no reason. Yes, I am constantly thirsty. I always have a drink on me and always just feel like I'm dying of thirst. Numbing and tingling sensation in upper and lower limbs. Yes. Um, and I'm going to circle back around to that as we get further down here at the end, um, just to kind of clear up a few things on that. Uh, cold and discolored limbs, hands, and feet. Yes. So, um, this list, I, I've noticed in this list kind of has some stuff that probably is interchangeable, but I guess I'll wait until we get down to the bottom of the list to address that. Um, general chest discomfort. Yes. And it's funny because again, I, I didn't recall it as much with the over the muscle implants, but with the under the muscle implants, like literally sometimes when I'm just sitting, uh, especially without like a bra on, I'll be on the couch and I'll just be like, It's so heavy and I never thought about it before. And I'll like hold it up with my hand and like realize that's a lot of weight. And it's gonna feel a lot different when it's not there. 
let's see here shortness of breath obviously especially if you have them under the muscle because it is compressing down onto your lungs so yes pain and or burning sensation around implants or under the arm yes liver and kidney dysfunction you know i have had um liver enzyme stuff mess up on my testing before so i'm going to say yes gallbladder problems i don't know toxic shock symptoms i'm not sure about that anxiety depression and panic attacks again i will say for this one i swear getting implants under the muscle makes a lot of these symptoms worse and it's probably just because your body is probably in panic mode because you have these heavy objects that have been inserted down under your pec muscle and it's like pressing on all your like vital organs naturally that would cause anxiety and a lot of problems if you think about it um feeling like you are dying yeah if you especially if you have a ruptured implant i literally felt like i had the flu all day every day and it's been three years with this new set and I can definitely say that as the time has went on with this new set, I can t definitely tell it's been a steady decline, um, which is terrifying. Okay, symptoms of fibromyalgia, yes. And I'll circle back around to that um, in a second. Symptoms of Lyme disease, yeah, that kind of reminds you of fibromyalgia. Symptoms of EBV, yeah. Symptoms of autoimmune diseases such as Raynaud's, Hashimoto's, uh, rheumatoid arthritis, scleroderma, lupus, Sojourn syndrome, nonspecific connective tissue disease, multiple sclerosis, Symptoms of BIAALC lymphoma and diagnosis of cancer. Okay. Yeah. So what usually happens is you'll start having a lot of crazy symptoms. A lot of them, it's like a mixture of all of these. And some of these you could compartmentalize into um, like say fibromyalgia. But maybe some people won't research fibromyalgia and so they won't click it because they won't know what it is but you know that can consist of literally feeling like you are dying all the time like you um are basically coming down with the flu severely but you're not um having a lot of neuropathy like symptoms like tingling and burning in your limbs and your hands um the rain odds like my hands like if i touch anything that's cold um, or go out in the cold, it will like literally turn my fingers like white and then blue and purple and it hurts really bad and it takes a long time to get the circulation back. Like it's just a lot. It's a lot of symptoms. You just feel terrible all the time. Um, and really the best way I've ever been able to describe what breast implant illness is in my opinion or in to me the biggest compartmentalization of symptoms is when you come down with a severe version of the flu, like everybody has usually had that at least once and they know like how you feel like you've been hit by a truck and you just literally want to lay there. You have no energy. You don't want to do anything at all. That to me, easiest way to kind of describe what breast implant illness is. If you constantly just feel like you have the flu and you have breast implants, and you have a lot of other weird symptoms that you didn't have before you had breast implants or they've exacerbated after you got the breast implants, you really might want to print a list out, whether it be this one or all of them and go through them and check them off and just really have a talk with yourself. Um, and you know, obviously most of us ladies got the breast implants because we felt like we wanted them and we needed them to make us feel better, to uh, make our image more appealing. And um, yeah, I get it because I've done it twice. Um, and the thought of removing them here soon is kind of scary because it will 
change the way I look in clothes uh, and change the way I look without clothes. But at the end of the day, if you look super good, but you don't feel good, what's the point of looking good? You know, and sometimes you just have to realize that being natural is okay or finding more natural approaches to improving your appearance. Had I known looking back that um, like fat transfer was an option, I might have considered that and maybe have tried to gain some weight to be able to do a procedure like that with a lift um, just to kind of, you know, fill in your like, um, you know, your flat mommy breasts from nursing or whatever. Um, and actually, if you are thinking about breast implants, maybe you look into that instead after you're done having kids and all that. And then just realize and remember, like after you get them removed, you're not gonna be walking around naked most of the time, I wouldn't imagine. So you are gonna be able to put on a bra and you can put in inserts into your bra and make your, you know, fill out your outfit as if you still had breast implants, but just not probably as prominent and still look fine, you know? Um, and I'm going to probably be experimenting with a lot of different looks and bras and those type of things after I explant. So definitely um, click the subscribe button if you haven't already, if you want to kind of follow me on that journey, because obviously I'm gonna to have to learn how to redress myself again and find ways to make me feel good in clothing. Um, granted, I know it's gonna be a journey because right after you explant, you know, they're gonna look way different than a year from now. So it's going to be a journey along the way um, and we'll go through it together. So. Yes, this video is getting really long, but um, I hope you got some value out of this video. If you have breast implants and you're having any different type of symptoms, comment those down below if you don't mind sharing. Um, if you have a lot of these symptoms, comment down below. Um, if you actually printed off the list, comment how many of them that you actually have in the comment section, just so that if other women see this, they can not feel so alone. And, you know, sometimes somebody might have a symptom that they hadn't seen on the list and, you know, it kind of be a light bulb moment for them. And then they realize, oh my gosh, it's probably this. And I could potentially, you know, take these out and feel better. Um, so, and then, oh, and before I get off here real quick, I did want to say, I've heard a lot of people saying it takes, um, I think it's like a month, a month for every year you had the implants to fully detox and recover. I don't know the vitality of that and like how that holds up for everybody. I've had mine for 20 years. That means it could take me 20 months. I'm just going to set my mindset that as soon as I remove them, I'm gonna start feeling better and I'm going to take very good care of myself, do some detoxing stuff and get better ASAP. Um, so yes, but if you're feeling my vibe, please subscribe. And if you like the video, give it a like and I'll see you guys next time.